it's Bug Jam 2007. Last year, it rained for an hour on Saturday afternoon. This year, it's torrential rain everywhere. I'm Paul Venners. I'm Tamara Heyman, and we're with you for Bug Jam 2007. It's the 21st birthday. Yes, Bug Jam has been here 21 years. Paul's been here for 20, and we're going to see what we can find to entertain you. Hopefully some sunshine. Uh, hopes for the weekend is hopefully run a 16, uh, first 16 in the van uh, for me, um, run a 17 dead, so uh, 16s and uh, make it to the final would be great, um, that's about it I think. Oh and have a great weekend with some mates. They come from far and wide. Some from further than others. This is Leif Nystrom's amazing turbo bug all the way from Sweden. We've got old cars in new hands like this amazing dragster. And we've got brand new cars abound. And it's great to see so many cars here because the VW Darcy have had an awful season, a real lack of races. But we've got a fantastic entry for Bug Jam. It's Friday morning, the gates are open and in they come by the thousand. The keen ones have been here since Thursday night, they've pitched their tents off site just so that they can be the first in. It's starting to rain a little, light drizzle, but that's nothing compared with the severe weather forecast. People are doing whatever they can, even pink umbrellas to keep the weather off. And there's one thing everybody with a Volkswagen knows. When you drive one, you get new friends at the most appropriate of times. Honestly, they just appear out of the thin blue air. Uh, with these severe weather warnings from our lovely weather forecasting people, these are the lucky few who are going to get their tents up before it hits hard. Look at all that lovely green grass. I wonder how long that's going to last. Sitting on 
Centre pod organising crew knew this weather was going to be hitting hard and rather than people sat around with nothing to do because obviously there's no track action in this wet, they brought forward some of the serious toys. We sent Tamara out to have a word with some of the drivers. Just watch the uh, killer monster trucks, they're huge big boys, and uh, Carl drives this one behind us, uh, slingshot, so what's that feel like? Well like I said earlier, it's just like sitting in a big armchair, no, it is actually a rough ride in one of these things, it's good fun, we send them to the sky and that's the way to do it. And what's it like in terms of power, safety? The power of this thing's got 1800 brake horsepower and it's doing 54 yards to a gallon, that's on blown alcohol. In the States, if they're doing a freestyle, two minutes, they'll use 26 gallon of fuel. I mean, we've got complete safety with these. We've got remote control boxes, basically an RRI. Anything gets out of shape, they can stop the truck straight away. So they're perfectly safe. And when you come off over those cars and you're wiggling around a bit, you're still perfectly safe or a bit hit and miss? No, we, I mean, we're all right, yeah, we can come in on one wheel, I've seen trucks land on with three wheels on them and they're perfectly safe, it's just getting back under control as fast as you possibly can. And control is four wheels down? Yeah. Brilliant, so how did you get into this? Um, through off-roading base, I used to have a street truck, from street trucks developed into race trucks, watched these guys race before, decided, right, that's it, nobody was going to put me in one, so I had to build my own. I'm Wayne, and this is my new car. It's a 1963 split-screen pickup. Um, I've done away with the chassis and made a new chrome molly chassis. Um, it's got a 526 Keith Black Hemi in it with a 1471 supercharger, and I'm hoping to race it at Bug Jam. I know what I'd like it to run, uh, but whether it will run that, it's, it's down to aerodynamics and how stable the car is, and all sorts of things, but I'd like to eventually see a six second quarter out of it, but that is going to be pushing it. So I've been building it for probably about four and a half years. Um, pretty much everything you can see was made here. Um, well, everything you, yeah, everything you can see was made here. Um, it's been, yeah, hours and hours and hours of work. What still to do six days out? Um, the, I've just heard that the gearbox has actually arrived in England, so that's a big weight off my shoulders. Um, I've got to finish panelling out the inside, assemble the engine for the last time, pressure test the fuel tank, assemble the axle, um, etc, etc. Outrage. Eight Rage. Tarmac Teaser. This car has been known under various guises. It's uh, the Cool Runnings crew. Laurie Craig at the wheel these days. Um, you got a preferred name for the funny car now? Uh, no, just Cool Runnings, Team Cool Runnings. That's what we are. That's what we do. You've had a wealth of experience in various classes, various Volkswagens. You've moved up to this uh, pretty mad bit of kit, and I understand I've got quite a serious engine in here now. Yeah, it's a 464 Chevy running on alcohol. It's um, we, we had an injection motor on it, but we've we've gone carburetor this time. It's a bit more reliable for bracket racing. But um, this new engine, so hopefully we we'll get into the eights and see what we can do from there. 
Well, it is a new engine, but a proven combo. It's, it's running another machine in one of the other uh, sort of mainstream classes. Yeah, it used to run a, a Willis, full-body Willis, and it ran an 8 in that. So a car that w- runs half of that, really. So it's got full potential there, really. You've got quite a bit of track time with the machine now, but you did have a few issues with the injection, a few frustrations at a few meetings. Are you going to be able to hit the ground running with this new setup? Yeah, it should it should do because it's it's a uh, the, the combination we've got now is a nicer nicer combination. It's um it it should handle the car should handle it a lot better. So it should 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 fly. Okay, now something very interesting has happened this year in that the moulds that originally produced this body shell were acquired by a certain Andy Raw, and he's going down a very similar route engine wise. Sadly, didn't quite make it here this weekend. But is that something you're looking forward to, Laurie? Yeah, definitely. I want the first side by side funny car run. It's going to be good. Can't, can't be better, can it? It's a shame it's not flat four, but it's still good. Well, eight seconds in flat four. Both of you would have to go and win the lottery to do, but we're, we're, we'll look forward to that. Well, thanks very much to the Cool Runnings team. We wish them the best of luck, and we're going to see what else we can find out in the pits. They call him The Gov. For many reasons. His real name's Paul Wright, and he's here right now, driver of the Alka Pop. Paul, you're known as a bit of a nutter at the wheel. You like to uh, keep your foot in, and you'll let the, the steering wheel do the job to get you to the other end. Are you still doing that this weekend? I don't know. I, I think nutter's probably a bit strong. Um, we like to collect data and uh, and make each run count, especially with the. Uh, the weather as it's been, you know, it, it takes a lot to get these uh, these cars out to race meetings and and when you've got a chance to get them down the track, you take, make the most of it, really. Of course, the big, well, I say problem, the big challenge with these machines is they're relatively short wheelbase and you're running a pretty powerful engine. Well, you were around back in the day um, when the VWs versus V8s, of course, it was always the Outlaw Anglias, were, were happening. Did you ever actually make it along to Bug Jam back then? Yeah, I think the last bug jam that I raced at was uh, the Prodigy we were playing, so I believe that was about ten years ago. Yeah, at least it was a fair while ago. We've all been doing this a long time. So, how about a, a little summary? It's extreme conditions for Santa Pod. It's definitely extreme conditions for the bug jam. Can, can you just give us a little compare and contrast between the bug jam 21 and the year the Prodigy played, which even I can't remember? Well, it was hot, and uh, and and it's, it's not today, but um, I think... I think the main thing was to have fun and um, to to have a part of the atmosphere, and that's what we're uh, we're trying to do this weekend. Put on a show for the for the fans. And still, the rain comes down. Not much to do, but I'll try and keep out of it. And of course, have a word with Abby. It's a bit wet. In fact, incredibly wet at the moment. I'm just hoping it dries out. Very much so. with an up-and-coming band called Pint Shot Riot. So, boys, Pint Shot Riot, tell me a bit about yourselves. Who are you all? I'm Baby Dave. I'm Rob. And I'm Minnie. And what are you doing here? We're here to play a gig, man. Um, we're here because uh, our manager's really into his Volkswagens and uh, he managed to swing us this gig here today. We're going on last, that's all we know, 11 o'clock, and we're looking forward to playing to a packed tent. Like This tent's absolutely perfect. We've been here before. We came to um, Big Bang Festival. Okay. and we, we stayed all weekend and we hung out with all these people and... You know, it's such a really nice vibe. It's really like mature, grown-up vibe, and yeah, and everyone's here to have a good time, man. So that's what we're here for too. So, Rob, where else have you played? What other gigs? Uh, we played Glastonbury a couple of weeks ago. Excellent. Probably the best one we've done in a very long time. So yeah, yeah very hard to stop it. It's uh, we're playing on the Sunday though, so we were all a bit mouldy after like five days. We've sort of been on the set. <laughs> a toe-tapping song. Look out for them boys over the next couple of years. Well, with this wet weather, there's only one thing to do. Dry a bit of the track and some hands and faces, even when it's still raining. Ronnie Picardo out in the amazing Blue Max jet-powered Beetle. 
It's very difficult conditions, even for our stunt and demo drivers. And you might think that the rain makes it easier for Terry Grant out here in the legend, but oh no, it's ten times worse. And he does most of his accidents in the wet. It was great for all our exhibition teams to pull themselves together and put on so many extra shows to keep things rolling along. Cheer it in this awful rain. If you're going to be a Santa pod when it's wet, it might as well be a bug jam. There's so much to see and do. Even if it's watching a bloke waving some socks around with apples in the bottom, we've got entertainment of every nature all over the site. Of course, you can always make up your own as you go along. We're now going to have a look at a few of the bands that were playing on the first night. Well, they sound great up on stage, but that rain, it even got to our sound recording equipment. much at all today um, because of the weather and the uh, rain um, so just basically made sure that I'm ready for tomorrow um, to get out on the track um, tonight I'm gonna go over to the dance area and go and see the plump DJs so uh, it could be a good night but obviously an early night but a good night you're obviously a seasoned bug jabber does this sort of weather really put a down on it or do people not really care I don't think people care to be honest um, it does it does put everyone in their own tents but I think um, People get together and chat and, and get to see each other and they sort of hop between tent to tent to uh, to get to know people. So I think it just adds to the spirit, I think.
have the green green grass of pod there's still a few bits of it left you know the mud starts spreading here at mud jam well there's still lots to see and do the cars for sale area was exceptionally busy for this time of the show normally people are looking to buy at the end of the weekend and of course there's always a chance of picking up a bargain or two not a doily over at the auto jumble and also the chance to run into a few random weirdos With all this mud around, freestyle motocross is certainly flavour of the weekend. We've sent Tamara out to have a chat to one of the stars. I'm here now with Ryan Pash, better known as Pashy, from uh, UK FMX. So Ryan's a bit wet today. Yeah, it makes it a bit hard in these conditions, but we're here to ride really and we've got to do the job. So, I mean, what do you set do? You can either pack up and go home or ride your bike and try and do the best you can. You know your limits though. Pretty much. I mean, we've had a couple of closed ones already today. Yeah. It's a bit difficult, but like I say, just going out there, trying the best we can. Hopefully it goes all right, won't have any crashes, and all good. Did some mad stunts there, body up in the air, legs twisted round, doing the okie So, um, you know, you've got to be pretty fit to do this? Yeah, you have to work on it a lot. I mean, if anything, we usually a lot more bent up than we were today. But with the weather, with a small gap, it makes it a lot harder to actually get yourself off the bike. Um, but yeah, generally you have to keep yourself fit, limbal, pretty strong. I mean, last thing you want to do is go out there and you're not warmed up or whatever. You go to do something and you miss your bike because it's a long way down. So, how did you get into this sport? Um, it came out from America, really. We used to watch all the Americans, of course, all your ride, like idle riders. You still got into it. So, you basically, it's a progression from most cross and such. I mean, most of the lads used to race. So, of course, you just go from racing, start doing a few jumps, one-handers, no-leggers, that sort of thing. And just work up to what we're doing now, pretty much.
the sun's now come out. We've got lots of anxious drivers. Ready and excited, Steve, about your race? Yeah, well, it's been a long time coming now. We've been waiting for the last couple of days for the weather to dry out. So uh, it's looking good. The car's uh, had a lot of prep work done for it. Uh, we've taken quite a bit of weight out of it. So uh, now we've picked up a new sponsor as well. So I've got to really show them what I can do. And what can you do? What are you hoping for? Well, I'm hoping to get into the 12s. I'm, I'm running Sportsman at the moment, but uh, the car is capable of doing 12s. Track's getting dry now. I'd be excited. I'm very much excited. I'm so looking forward to uh, getting the first run of the weekend. Really nervous though, but uh, it's going to be fun, I hope. Brilliant. What time are you hoping for? Um, to start off with, I'd like a 17, um, and then maybe if I get another run, I'll try and wind up a bit more and try and get into a 16, but uh, I'll be happy with a 17, just so I've got something to qualify with. And you've raced, and you've had chance to race. Definitely, just to, just to get the first run out of the way, and then I'll be so much more relaxed, and, uh, and then hopefully I'll get a few more in, so uh, it'll be good. The sun has come out, Tamara. Girl, you've done good. The crowds have come running out as soon as the track's dried. The only sad thing is that the weather shut off and the sun came out just around about the time as the MSA license kicked in and that meant this year no run what you brung at all at Santa Pod and it was such a shame there were some really cool and quick machines that have been specially prepped to come out and play at Bug Jam in the public sessions out on the track however it's our racers who've invested so much money and time in their vehicles who are desperate for track time and there is Abby Probably one of the most relieved racers out there, powering down the track in the Sambasaurus. And now, over to have a look at that mad orange turbo bug all the way from Sweden, and Leif Nystrom coming into stage. The last time we saw this awesome car was at Big Bang a couple of years ago when he had a huge moment at the top end of the track and had to pull his chutes out to stay straight. It was a great launch, but this is not sounding clever at all. Well, one of the stars of the show, the orange bug all the way from Sweden, Leif Nyström, came out, did an awesome burnout, and then things went a little wrong, and we're going to have to have a word with the man himself to find out what's happened. Anything serious going on here? Yeah, well, you know, I pretty much uh, grenaded the, the motor after the burnout. Uh, so far, I've been... Um, going into it's a big window in the engine case on top uh, it's uh, the third connection rod has uh, seized up on the crank and uh, uh, the connection rod has you know, snapped off I don't know how much damage there is in there I know for sure that uh, the case is gone and the, can the crank is probably gone as well uh, hopefully the cam has survived depending on where the connection rod uh, snapped off and I'm gonna take off the valve covers now to see if there's uh, something wrong with the valve train uh, it actually turns on the crank now but uh, pretty much the the case is ruined an ARPM two-piece case you know this is this is rare kit not easily available and I know that you've done a lot of specific machining on here and and a roller crank I mean a lot of the parts on here are unique and over the years you've machined everything together how far back is this gonna set you basically most of the machining and the most trouble I had uh, was to fit the, the Chevy small block uh, roller lifters and to get it to work with the uh, the push rod tubes and and to have the roller lifters properly set it there and so I'm about to find out tomorrow if a, a guy here in UK is a, maybe gonna help me out with a, a good used uh, two-piece ARPM case but this is real hybrid stuff not many people running this combination anywhere in the world but you've made it work yeah, I mean, you, you've run deep into the eights, 850s yeah no uh, 880s actually and uh, the thing is that uh, why I'm so concerned about the case now, obviously I could switch over to an Autocraft or an linear case, but the thing is I really like my heads and they are made for the old uh, ARPM bolt pattern, so that's why I am uh, I would probably stick to that. Because what I like most of you know, coming here is all the guys that are really friendly and um, I get to know a lot of people who's in the same boat as me, you know, figuring out how to get a V-Dub to go as fast as possible. So, a lot of fun and obviously it's a, like the biggest uh, show 
Volkswagen show on, on this planet so it's just too bad with the weather now and uh, obviously me blowing up the engine. Hi there, how are you finding Book Jam 2007? It's alright, it's muddy but it's fun. Got your wellies? Oh, I've got my wellies definitely. <laughs> what have you seen so far? Um, looked at monster trucks, looked at the um, stunt cars and everything so well happy because at least the lads have seen something now. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> Thank you very much. Brilliant, so even though it has been rainy, we can still have a good time at Book Jam. An important part of Bug Jam is the guest race class. One of those is Street Eliminator. I'm here with Andy Frost now. So what's so special about Bug Jam? Um, well, obviously there's a party atmosphere at Bug Jam. Uh, we can go and listen to music, which we can't usually do at any other Street Eliminator meeting. And uh, obviously I like the racing in front of a big, a big crowd. Uh, we only get that at certain events, particularly not Street Eliminator events, but main events and Euro finals. So I, I love racing in front of big crowds. A bit of a show off, really. Are you happy now the sun's come out and it's a bit drier? Uh, yeah, a lot happier. I'm hoping that it doesn't rain again today so we we'll actually show the crowd how fast these cars are. And how fast are they? Tell me. Well, this one particularly has run 7, 6, 190 mile an hour nearly. The enthusiasm of the spectators, this generally gets 30, 30 35,000 people through the gates. And whilst the, 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 the bulk of the uh, spectators are VW enthusiasts, they do like the race classes and, and ourselves, amongst with the other um, invited classes, I guess in, increase their excitement for racing. That was Colin Lazerby you've been listening to, and this is him in his street legal Chevy 210 sedan. Look at the times and speeds that these street legal machines do. The Real Steel Street Eliminator series is one of the quickest classes of street legal cars anywhere in the world. This is Andy Frost in the Vauxhall Victor, and over there in the Garn Crazy Zephyr is Wilf Stacy. Andy Frost is recognised as one of the quickest machines in the world. Wow, look at that 184 miles an hour in just 8.5 seconds. In the Calibra, struggling on the start line, there is Steve Paintman with a big nitrous motor and again favouring nitrous in the little Ford Pop. That's Jeff Meads. The one man who's run down as low as eight zeros with block treaded tyres is this geezer here, known as Splinter. It's Steve Nash in his brand new race car. That body shell he created himself out of composites in his back garden. And Chris Isaacs built the chassis. Look at that, a 009 reaction just in a practice run. Runs through an 8.7, 169 miles an hour. Remember, those cars can drive off the end of the track and down to Tesco's if they want. The crazy, crazy outlaw Anglias were a huge part of the VW Drag Racing Club's whole season back in the early and mid-90s. They suffered with a few crashes and the class fell away, but over the last couple of seasons they've come back bigger and stronger than ever. Some of these machines are street legal too, but the top end of the class are capable of running deep into the sevens. And finally amongst our invited classes we have the super modified crew. These are the second quickest door slammer class in Europe and it's side by side racing, very tightly controlled weight brakes and engine power so that the racing is never much further than the car length apart of the top end. Over in the Cortina we have Tim Garlic in this lane, Paul Mander in a car which he largely built himself, that little Plymouth Arrow looks a bit diminutive but it packs a serious punch. Rick Astley impersonator here at Pod. As you can tell, it started raining again, but you got to do something to keep smiling, haven't you? Thank <laughs> you. 
pink afros, wellies, and men in bras. It has to be Bug Jam. Can't wait to see his mental breakdown. That would be an awful thing to say about anybody except for Wayne Ullman. Here it is, that crazy, crazy machine is here. Mental breakdown? Why? Well, eventually this crazy truck will have side gates. It will have a towing hook and it's already got the flashing light. Mental breakdown. Well, Wayne got the machine here, but sadly, that gearbox that had just arrived when we spoke to him back at his workshop turned out to have an input shaft that was just an inch and a half too long, which meant they couldn't make the gearbox up to the engine, which meant no drive, mission abandoned. But I made a promise to Wayne, we're going to get you and that truck down the track, and the crowd went mad when they saw this. And this is what it's all about. It's Bug Jam, the VW DRC's very own championship round above all others. Finally, we get to see some of our pro cars out in the first of their proper qualifying sessions. Wapo racing in the VW DRC also plays a big part in the Outlaw Flat 4 series. And as ever, Martin Taylor pulling the front wheels high into the sky. So does Donald Harvey in the Drop the Hammer black bug you can see alongside him here. Well, Bubba's been known to pull some big wheelies, and one car we saw doing huge wheelies at the Easter Thunderball in Super Gas of all things was Robert Youngen here from Holland in the green turbo bug. Sticking with our alternate engine guys at the moment, a mixture of Subaru engines just like the green bug you've seen, and a few V8s thrown in for good measure. Well, thanks to Simon Bailey, he of the turbocharged dragster, because he has provided us with this in-car footage. Following right through the weekend, Abby Tether out again in the Sambasaurus. She getting closer to one of those personal goals. She desperately wants a 16. And the way off it at the moment, more work to do back in the pits. Beetlejuice in another guise. The man getting to grips, sort of, with this awesome machine with so much history is Peter Christie from Carnoustie up in Scotland. Matt Atwood favours the V8 power, the superchargers on the back of this machine now, and the front wheels going much higher than we've ever seen them go before. Blacklisted fastback, really showing some early promise. Running through with a 1265. Here's the man with the in-car camera footage, it's Simon Bailey. He's only had a few meetings out in the ex-Proteus dragster that Paul Jackson has taken down into the sevens, but he's so comfortable and so confident behind the wheel of this machine.
gently check out pass for him. <laughs> he runs through with a 990. Took me four years of driving Draxxus before I was brave enough to go anywhere near that quick. It's Jay Aldred in his buggy. It's an amazing bit of kit. It's time for us to go out into the pits. You're looking at a renegade beach buggy done full on drag styly. The beach buggies have been around in the VW DRC for a long time. Julie Snape had one of these machines back in the late 80s and early 90s. And Alison Southcombe had a GP Mark I that was doing great guns a few years ago and is due to come back. But this beautiful creation comes from the mind of Jason Aldred, who's here. He prefers to be known as Jay. This is a culmination of several ideas and a couple of development stages and it, and it really is the cream of the crop with some really clever bits of kit in it but let's take a step back to when you first decided to go drag racing with a buggy J if you wouldn't mind. Um, yeah it was probably um, five years ago now um, basically it was a weight thing um, Lots of people racing Beetles, very quick Beetles out there, um, and I just wanted something that was going to be really, really light. The, the first version of this buggy was a, was a Manx, and um, basically everything that you see here from the, from the back forward is, is the original buggy apart from the shell. So I started, this car started um, with an aspirated motor in it, um, which then moved on to nitrous, um, and, and now it's got a uh, 2332 turbo EFI motor in it, making 460 horsepower, um, 420 knife foot power to torque. Now, um, like me, you went to John Ma for assistance with this 2332. It's as big as you can go with a stock case and not go crazy and have really thinned out cases and stuff. Are these all the reasons so you build a bulletproof, fairly reliable motor? Yeah, I mean, what what... John and I basically did was a bit of a joint effort really in terms of um, building this motor. John's expertise on DTA and, and fuel injection um, and, and I'm an engineer so I like to sort of design things as well so John and I came up with this as a package. Um, quite developmental really in some respects because um, although this sort of stuff's been done before it's never really been done in this country. You don't see many of plenum style type uh, intake systems um, eight injectors and I have to actually say Russ Fellows immense amount of help off of Russell as well uh, because Russ was one of the first to be getting into injection really wasn't he yeah absolutely and, and, and Russ has been been with me all the way through this giving me advice and whatnot um, in, t in terms of, of, of it doing what it you know does and making the power it makes but we're turned down a little bit still on it. We're only at 18 psi at the moment, so um, I, I guess eventually looking at 2830 possibly, or are you never going to go that mad? No, probably will. Yeah, <laughs> probably will. We like that. But you've also strayed a little bit off of the conventional thinking in terms of rear suspension. You've gone with IRS. You've got the CV joints, a drive shaft that goes up and down, and the wheel stays neutral all the way through. Um, Keith Hume was one of the first people to do it in this country, and not too many people have gone down that route. He used a reverse A arm and a control arm to keep the uh, the hub and the wheel where it should be. Yours is quite a bit different to that. It's kind of a double A arm, double ladder bar setup. Quite unusual. The, the the real issue with this buggy was it was a short wheelbase buggy, so the chassis was only 84 inches long, and we needed to find a way to get this chassis up to 96. And I designed a uh, rear suspension setup that gave me the extra length. Um, so basically it's exactly the same design as a normal trailing arm IRS system um, but what I've now done is I've gone for two rows joints, double A arm, so it's, it's, it's basically the same, taking the torsion bar out of the uh, equation and we're now on a 450 pound uh, AVO spring setup. This is a low nine second car, um, you know realistically um, power to weight ratio, thousand horsepower a tonne. Um, Realistically, it's a nine-second car. Then. And I'd just like to point out that a low nine-second car of the slightly off-roady Volkswagen thing, we've not had anything like that since Craig Win Stanley in the glory days when we had Craig and we had Keith Soon going head-to-head -head every time. He's a nice fella. It's a beautiful car. Expect great things from this renegade. <laughs> Thank you. 
Sunday morning. There's a few wreckheads still smiling out there. Some people will be in church somewhere, but we are praising the sun. But the sun's a mixed blessing because it's starting to turn all this mud slurry into mud porridge. People leave the strangest of things round sight. But then I guess if you've been traipsing through this mud, the chance of sitting a three piece sweet might be quite welcome. Well, fortunately, even the grandstand banking has dried out. So people are making their way over to the drag strip because they can hear the thunderous sounds of V8s as the Street Eliminator series get ready for their first round of eliminations. One man who gets up very early is Nigel here, the main presenter on Santa Pod's very own Nitro FM. He stays up late too because he's broadcasting from the stages till 2 a.m. Buggered. Hmm, not just the baby too. Well, we move on to Real Steel Street Eliminator Series with Real Steel Webster Race Engineering Power Poor, Eurodragster.com, Andy Robinson Race Cars, American Car World. Watermilehigh.com, BH Autograph Embroidery Solutions, and Motorsport Marketing Solutions back in this class. There's a huge field of very competitive cars. Andy Frost, one of the quickest men in the world in the street legal machine, powering on down. And Ian Jackson there making a welcome return to the class has not got anything to come back with. Steve Pakeman has won this championship many times in the past and is the reigning world champion after the trip when they all went out to the States a couple of years ago and in the other lane returning to the class after a layoff for 10 years is Billy McDermott the issues there for him sadly and Pateman takes the win Colin Lazenby in the Chevy 210 sedan we saw him earlier out on track that car now really starting to launch hard and he comes and he's away Oh, what a massive amount of wheel! Oh dear, the tyre shake came in, the wheels have gone, and oh no, look at the state of that car. Well, we've seen it get tyre shake right through this season. Are oh, those flames nothing to worry about there? Look at that rear axle, it looks like it's completely ripped away. There goes the tyre shake, look at that back axle going. Oh no, that's such a gorgeous car, and the team have had a tortuous couple of seasons with the big engine damage just before bug jam last year well it's great to see Colin get out all in one piece there's absolutely nothing wrong with him but the same can't be said for that car that's awful damage and look what it's done to one of our primary sponsors sponsor board here we go here we can see the tire shake just starting there you can see the vibrations and that's just ripped the four bar linkages out. In fact, you can see them dangling down underneath the car along with a prop shaft. Oh, what a mess. That is just what the Lazenby team did not need. Well, the Gojacks have been put under the car and the crew are wheeling it back. You can see where the door's been sliced open. What a mess. We continue. This is Ray Coma. He also suffered engine damage early last season and again earlier on at the Thunderball but <laughs> look at that man go Jeff Meads from the South End Posse powering on through he really has got that chassis baselined and he's now banging the nitrous in Splinter the man who does such awesome rolling burnouts out with the Cougar Mark Perkins over there in the silver machine with the yellow stripe yes of course it's another one of John Webster's old race cars and he's out for his second meeting 
and he's given it all he's got but of course Splinter much more power and a lot more experience taking the win at the top end well two old stalwarts of the class L Sims in the red Vauxhall slightly bigger than the other one we saw earlier and Ian Hook the reigning real steel street eliminator champion but on a baby borrowed engine and he takes the win Ray Tucker in the vicious Corvette. Look at the size of that supercharger. Well, if the man ever looks a bit coy, it's because he breeds them for a living. Coy Carp, that is. In the other lane, the originator of the silver with yellow stripes look. It is John Webster from Webster Race Engineering in the MG. And this one is neck and neck. There's nothing in it. MG just slightly ahead of the top end. Wax on, wax off, Wolf over there, and what's this? A silver Mustang? Yep, it's another Webster machine. This time, piloted by the ever smiling Alex McIntosh, and yet more issues there for the gone crazy Zephyr. He cannot catch the Mustang. This is VW Pro. This is Glyn Morgan, the reigning champion, up against Peter Christie in the new to him Beetlejuice. Oh, he's getting the wheels up but drops out. It's going to affect his ET so bad. Even if he can catch up, all he can do is break out or hope that Glyn breaks out by more. But he's a seasoned campaigner and it's Glyn who takes the win. Next up. We have the dude, Neil Ellis, over there in the far lane. In this lane, it's Colin Jardine in this gorgeous silver oval. Been picking the wheels up through the weekend. An unusual 60-foot exit, but he's been hanging on in there. And this is close at the top end. But it's the dude who takes the win. The man with the more experience. Donald Harvey then, he's been picking up the front wheels as he drops the hammer, is up against Travis Ryder. Travis is waiting patiently for his green light and he's away, the chase is on. It looks like Donald's pulling away though. A little bit more from Travis. Is Donald going to break out of the top end or does he go through safe? He does indeed. Beautiful, beautiful wheelie there. So good, we had to see it from another angle. And speaking of beautiful wheelies, one man who never fails to impress is Martin Taylor. He's on a bye run. He can just solo through. As long as he breaks those lights down on the start line, he's uh, made it safely through to the semis. And, of course, that's what he's done. This is VW Sportsman round two. Closest to us is Graham Fairhead in that fiberglass type three that he made himself over there in the far lane the most unlucky man around the VWDRC.com webmaster is Chris Bray twice now in two years he's had his uh, golf race cars shunted and he's only just managed to get his polo together it's a close run thing at the top end Graham has got so much more experience and that shows at the top end he takes the win new boy Craig Allen out there in the Baja he likes to call it a badger he's been tutored by the crazy northerner more of him later and it's Cy Funnel all the way from Newquay in the Silver Golf regular campaigner in this class and he's been getting pretty good of late but oh not quite good enough it's Craig Allen we've been following her right through the weekend from leaving her house at the start of this DVD and she's out there on track this is round two first time we've seen Abby in a competitive race Chris Bayliss out there in another one of the cars from the VWDRC's past He's powering on down. It looks like he's going to catch her. He's going to have, have to be careful he doesn't break out. And at the win light, it's Abby who takes the win. Steve Parfit, the rookie, out there all on his own. He can't do any wrong now. And obviously he takes the win. Mark Malone out there in this ponderous but rather quick Type 25 up against new boy Adrian Wigley in his Skoda and there's no sign of this Skoda it should be catching him by now 
Well, Mark needs to make sure he doesn't break out of the top end. If he runs quicker than he's dialed in, he'd have thrown it all away. But no, he takes the win. Oh, OK, fair enough. Martin Ayton, the man, forever drives a hairdresser's car. And he's got some competition alongside him this time. Sarah Hales in the little thumper, Red Bug. She's got a good four seasons under her belt now. And she's catching. Is she going to do it at the top end? No, Martin retains that lead and goes through to the quarters. Well, last night was fun, wasn't it? Get the state of this place. Bug Jam's not just about fast cars. You don't have to have a fast car just to get noticed. There's also some supercars entered in the show and shine competition. So we're going to go over now to take a look. There is a plan, I've just put a new engine in it, a 1914, um, and on the way here actually I smashed my sump, so Friday morning I had to spend it uh, underneath the car in the rain taking it apart, but it's working now. <laughs> so uh, it's all original, original interior, uh, some Australian import, original paint, so it's a good car. What year actually is it? It's 1964. It's quite good, I've only had this engine in for a bit, but um, it's nice to have something quick on the road and something old. People, it's a real head turn. Everyone always says, you know, well, what is it? And comes another look and things like that. Yeah, it's just a really enjoyable drive and the scene's always really good and it's just a good laugh, really. But, yeah, I wanted to take it on the track this year, so uh, fingers crossed, maybe action or bug jam next year will be down the track. to do was um, started off with a 72 Beetle, stripped it down just to the centre tunnel and built it up new from there. Everything apart from that is brand new. How long has it taken? It's taken three and a half years. It's, it is definitely fun to drive. It's a different, a different experience. You're driving an old car still. Um, we have got plans to put a Scooby Lump in it. It's running a 1600 at the moment, so it should give it a bit more modern power. And um, we're going to probably change the suspension, give it a little bit a better ride as well. But no, it's fun. It gets attention, and we like the we like the attention. It's good fun. It's worth the three years, definitely. This is its first show, so it's been out about three times this year. So it's a start to go on, basically. Have you built it to try and win awards, or just for a bit of fun? For fun. We did build it. We, just, we like the attention a little bit, but we built it for something to do. It's better than sitting and watching the TV. So it gets us out in the workshop and gets us using the tools. So no, it's good. So, do you find this car's a little bit limited space-wise? It's very limited space-wise, but this one is a lot better. Basically, this is a 1953 Oval, uh, original heater channels, original floors. Uh, it's completely reworked, recustomized, full leather interior, including the floors, headliner, everything. All detailed underneath, stainless steel fittings, 2.2 litre nitrous injected engine. Um, just fully detailed throughout, golf disc brakes. Um, slow suspension, narrowed beam, uh, it's all got torsion bars on the back, all traction bars, so it, uh, it handles as well as it looks. It drives as well as any modern car. A little bit noisier, but it drives well, yes. I drive it whenever, whenever I can, really. It's not my daily driver, no. I don't use it for going to work, 
but uh, whenever it's, it's, it's nice weather I'll take it out, yeah. I've had experience with street rods, I've done a couple of street rods in the past, um, so I wanted to have a bit of a street rod influence into Beatles, just try and do something a little bit different than the norm. It's not exactly Cal Luke, it's, it's a bit custom, it's a bit Cal Luke, it's a bit of everything. I just wanted to put my own little take on the things, my own little ideas. 23 went December, um, just restored it, got it back on the road. Um, when was it? May. In May, yeah. Have you gone for absolutely original throughout? No, totally not. It's got all Porsche brakes and load suspension, Porsche back, rear suspension, and everything's different, really. Well, it stops all right, but I wouldn't say it was like driving a new car. But nothing like. <laughs> we did, we've just been, we've been down to Nikki um, earlier on in the year. We've probably done I don't know, a couple of thousand so far since May, so it's been up and down a bit, yeah. And apart from the obvious answer, like, it's got loads of character, lots of space, very, very convenient. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I must be mad. I just love, I just love split screen campers. Isn't they brilliant? Well, it's, um, it's just been rebuilt. It's its first outing. It's a metallic pa- purple with um, ghost flames that shimmer in the sunlight. Um, and it's a rebuilt 1641 twin port, twin carb engine. What year? 1975. What's it like to drive? Fantastic. <laughs> but I would say that I'm biased. I've only had it back two days, but it's going to be my daily driver every day, so yes. I absolutely love it. I love my Beetle. I've had it for eight years, and I just wanted to make it as best as I possibly could. Modified a quarter final stage, and they are supported by Ali Jax, Andy Robinson Race Cars, Centerline Wheels, Eurodragster.com, and Speedflow, and LA Racing Parts, Mickey Thompson Tires, Stroud Safety, and Toyo Tires. You're looking at one of the quickest normally aspirated machines. It's Nigel Payne at the wheel of this huge great Corvette. And in the other lane, in the Mark III Cortina, is Tim Garlick. Tim has recently swapped from a hybrid Rover V8 to a more traditional American racing V8 and the power he's making, despite the extra weight he's had to put in, showing all the way through at the top end as he takes the win. This is Andy Kirk this year, sadly without his crew chief, the son who's staying in Bahrain. The Ratfin Camaro always puts in a good turn and he's up against new boy not new to drag racing but certainly to this class in an ex-pro modified calibra run by dave minge it is paul marston from paul marston racing and he's had a bit of a checkered weekend put in one of the strongest showings but nothing really in comparison with andy kirk Amanda in the Plymouth Arrow. It's one of the smallest cars and it's not got a huge engine up against the very experienced Obsession Motorsports crew with Craig Gibbs at the wheel. He's up and away. We can see that little Plymouth Arrow picking up a front wheel too. But he's got one heck of a chasing job to do and he's not going to drive round Craig Gibbs on a run like that. Sadly, we didn't see much of this man last year. Fred Hone took a year out after suffering some engine damage on his own machine. Couldn't really afford to finance it, but instead went out and crewed for so many other people. And it's the rookie out in the other lane, Andy Chilton, who's already started making some huge improvements to the Rover. But he's got a long way to go to match that awesome power in the Granada Scorpio. VW Sportsman are now through to the quarterfinals. We've got Mark Nairton closest to us in the Sirocco. He's up against Daniel Smith in the far lane. Martin up against Daniel Smith. Not much in it on the reaction times. Martin's powering through. 
He's a season campaigner. About three seasons ago, he upgraded to a much bigger engine in this machine. And he does it again. And his experience paying as he takes the win at the top end. It's Fairhead closest to us. Such an unusual machine, this. What with its Type 4 power and a Type 25 gearbox up against the showroom Skoda, the Octavia with Wiggly at the wheel. He's the rookie, and Graham Fairhead has not only driven in the VW DRC, but he's crewed in the VW DRC over at least 15 years, and it's that experience that takes the win at the top end. Two more rookies then. Parfit got the chasing job in the green bug. Craig Allen with pie power. The big fella has been guiding him all the way through this weekend, giving him tactics, and yes, he's done it again. Taken the win and knocked out the rookie. So here comes our girl then with a nice smoky bird now. Abby has got the great fortune of coming up against a buy at this stage. Break the beans, she sees the next round. Let's see the Samba bouncing through the gears. And of course, takes the win at the top end, hovering the right way towards a 16 there with a 17-3. Outlaw Anglias then, our number one qualified quickest man on the block. It is the Gov. Look at the Alco Cop fly. Yet another arrow straight run from this machine. Well, the Dayglow Twister was originally called that, not only because of the paint job, but because it twists all over the track. However, this is about the third incarnation of it. It's much more stable now. And our new boy out there. In the little Thames van. Oh, good grief! Living up to its name, Pete Ashworth crosses the centre line, knocks himself out. <laughs> it's a surprise win there for the silver van. Rob Stone's been around Outlaw Angler for a long, long time, but he's not been out on track for quite a few seasons. And oh, 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 wheels of action from him and Ray Guy there in the other lane. That's sweet as. Road legal is Rob Stone, and the red pop takes a win. We've just got to take a look at that from another angle. Look at that, both cars up together and down together. But Ray can't quite keep up with Rob. Now we're on to VW alternate engine. And the grave robber by Eni. It's been at the wheel. Remember, this is all done on dialings, so even though the funny car has powered off ahead, it's not necessarily going to take the win. Oh, look at that, Matt Atwood going absolutely vertical in the fastback. It was three years ago when he first popped those front wheels when he took some weight out of the machine, but that supercharge has helped greatly with his wheelies. Not so good on his racing tactics. Look at that! My great fortune and courtesy. Cy Bailey, we have some in-car footage. Reach for the skies, boy! What nasty thud as he hits the deck. And I thought good racers can and should. He attempts to complete the race just in case there's a problem in the other lane. Andy Raw in the No Remorse machine. He should have been here in his funny car. It would have been so good to see two VW funny cars alongside each other. It's a high run and he takes the win. Street eliminator time. Webster's already completed his burnout. Pateman now coming forwards into stage. Calibra running the old school nitrous setup and the MG with one single huge turbo. Webster's been getting a grip and a tune on that machine. He's been going quicker, but he's got nothing compared with Payton at the top end. 
So last year's champion with a borrowed a tiny engine, not making much power. He always cuts a good light, as he did there. But Andy Frost with those huge twin turbos goes powering on through and flying down the track. Taking the win. Not the highest mile an hour Frost has done, but he's safely through. Steve Nash at the Easter Thunderballs running out of competition. A little test run in front of the crowds in the afternoon. Pulled three huge wheelies in that Cougar. He's tamed it down a little. He's up against Alex McIntosh over there in the far lane. And Alex McIntosh taking a surprise lead here. Has Splinter got anything to come back with? Well, what I missed there was the red light that Alex pulled. No wonder he took off like a scolding cat on the start line. And with a bye, it's Jeff Meads. Last season had this new Cromoly chassis built to the latest specs, and he has been down as low as 8.3, but running through there with a safe 990. BW Pro have reached the quarterfinals, and it's Glenn Morgan, our reigning champion, up against Neil Ellis. Neil did such a good driving job in the last round, but he's now up against the man. Car looked to bog a little through to 60 foot. He's got the slightly quicker car as the dude, but he's got to catch up with Glynn here and make sure he doesn't break out. But oh no, he's just been pipped at the post. Oh, this is a bye run. Had quite a few buys in this competition. Donald Harvey in the drop the hammer machine. Fortunate to get one here. 17 cars eventually made it to the track this afternoon. It's one more than the 16 car field, so there were a lot of buys to come up against in the ladder. And people have been very fortunate, and here's another one. Martin Taylor in Little Whopper, dialing in with a 12.50. Entering Mr. Bug Jam 2007, are you yes. right? Yes. What are you going to do? Uh, don't know. I'll see what happens when I get up there. I think it's going to be a bit of a spur of the moment, sort of like, uh, you know, why am I here? <laughs> up for doing anything? Uh, yeah. Um, I don't really know what. But don't care? A bit of a laugh, yeah. Have it. And uh, prize money? Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. What are you going to spend it on? My car, obviously. My, what do you my, got? My golf. Turbo Mark II. So. Laura, Shell, you're both entering Miss Bug Jam 2007. Do you know what you have to do? Not yet, no. Are you excited? We are very I'm excited. excited. <laughs> Up for doing anything, ladies? Almost. <laughs> and it's £200 prize money. If you win, what are you going to spend it on? Shoes. Clothes. Mr. and Mrs. Bug Jam 2007, so instant tan. <laughs> up, and Shell, how does it feel to be a winner? Take home 200 quid. Well, I, there's no words to can't express it really. It's going to be, it's going to be Bug Jam tastic, I say. <laughs> the new word for the dictionary. Fantastic, definitely. And what made you win, Shell? What was it that gave you the edge? Oh, I don't know. Maybe um, my top slipped by accident. 
listening to voice like that then. Big name my of. <laughs> and what was it something about distracting a fairy? Oh yeah, the fairy might have got an eyeful as well accidentally on purpose. So uh, you're getting a 50% from instant tan as well because that helped him to... Yeah, definitely. Well, definitely. I, mean, I think we should probably distracted him when, when I was fighting him because I, I swear he lost his concentration for a second or two. That's when I just took advantage of it. I do love to squirt. Semi-finals for the Super Modified. Andy Kirk with another of his trademark burnouts. Let's go to five into the final. He's going to be up against Tim Garlic in the Mark III Cortina. You see Fredo waiting patiently behind Tim. Come into stage. So close this race in. It's important to get a good reaction time, which Tim Garlic has. But Andy Kirk's coming up alongside him here. This is so close. And at the top end, Tim just about managed to hold on to it and take the win. And Andy Kirk went into deep stage momentarily. Well, he currently is the class record holder on the ET front. Fred Hone in the white and yellow machine in the far lane. Craig Gibbs won this event last year. He was a very happy man at Bug Jam having chased a nasty misfire up until Bug Jam. So, yes, he got the power and the reactions to overcome Fred home. No, Fred is known for being asleep at the wheel on the start line, but he's been cutting some great reaction times. We've seen this smoke from the car at the top end on every run, but there's nothing being dropped on the track, and he's gone through again. He finals again for Outlaw Anglia. And it be a poor on Rockstone. He's got one hell of a fight on here, and he's got no chance, to be perfectly honest, against Paul Wright on yet another flyer. He's been running consistent 770s all weekend. But David Sidaway is, without a doubt, not only a rookie, but a huge underdog in this gorgeous looking machine. And he's got a bye. And he's through to the final, a very happy man. One of the slowest cars making it to the final. Always good to see the underdog go through. Well, Andy Raw pulls a big wheelie in the no remorse machine and he shot past the man in the opposite lane. Ian Huggan from the Twisted Sanity Nitrous Controller team who was just asleep on the wheel. And Andy takes the win. Well, Mark Skeen again benefiting from a buy. So many buys today. Panel van has popped many big wheelies and runs into the 13s, but he's really struggling there. Gear selection problems. In fact, one of our gears is missing, apparently. Doesn't matter on a buy, he's through. Yep, he's been doing so well. All that patience, all that preparation been paying well. She's off and away. The patient. Mr. Aiden away there. Looked like the Sirocco bogged a little in the 60 foot. How's Abby doing? Can she hold on and make it through another round? Oh, the Sirocco's catching at the top end. And Martin drives round her and takes the win. What a burnout there from the fast back and Craig Allen. He has been tutored by the evil chubby Mick Gergerty. Sadly, we're not seeing racing this weekend, which is a real shame. And the dark powers have worked again. The new boy has psyched the oh-so-experienced Graham Freeman into a red light, and the Baja is going to solo all the way through. Baja from the Baja Peninsula in Mexico. Not a bad job, even though it says so on the car. Glyn Morgan taking it nice and steady. It's a bye run. He's going to make it to yet another final. Can the man do no wrong? A bit of a battle on here as Donald Harvey in this car that's getting so popular that he's dropped the hammer machine. He's up against Martin Taylor in Little Whopper. Both cars have been pulling the wheel skywards. Are we going to get side by side wheelies here? Well, we didn't quite see the wheelie that Donald did, but he's off to a good start. Can he catch up, little whopper? He needs to be in front without breaking out as they cross the line. Doesn't quite do it. It's Martin Taylor who takes the win. Terminator time. Jeff Mead's in the pot. Look 
looking now to put all the nitrous he can through that pop. He gets a good reaction time, but the car is just not responding at mid-track. And running through with an 8.3, it's Andy Frost who takes the win. What a gorgeous smoky burnout from Splinter over there in the Cougar. This is twin turbo in the grey machine, up against nitrous and lots of it in the Calibra. Oh no, too much nitrous, slip of the foot. Who knows, but Steve Pavement lights the red bulb, he's thrown it all away. And it's Splinter who takes the win. Well, lots and lots of clouds, but they're white fluffy ones, not too many menacing grey ones. But please stay away, we're enjoying the sunshine, as are our younger colleagues with the junior dragsters. Racing up to the eighth. And an opportunity for some of the racers who've been knocked out to come out and put in some practice laps. Robert Youngen runs regular 950s. Normally races in super gas. And crowd getting into the spirit of things as well. In particular, the Bug Jam B without the Fire Force Jet Funny Cars. Martin Hill at the wheel. What's the best thing about Bug Jamming for you? Um, being here, watching the well, watching the bit of racing that there was, um, and just the whole atmosphere, and everyone's really friendly, and it's fantastic. Oh, waking up this morning in the sun shining. <laughs> just it was. It's been really good so far. Really enjoyed it. Oh God, it's got to be the weather. It's been fantastic, hasn't it? <laughs> no, I guess it's just been the camaraderie, really. You know, being with people that. You know, really, I've just come here simply for the spirited bug jam, not being put off by the weather or you know anything like that. It's been, it's been a good time. It's been a real good time. Uh, all the mud. <laughs> yeah. Um, when the sun came out for a little bit, and just standing here now looking at just amazing cars and vans. <laughs> um, taking loads of photographs of all the people having lots of fun and all the mud fights that went with it. Yeah. It was our first bug jam and we very much enjoyed it and we will be coming back, I'm sure. Yes, we will be. Hopefully with a van. Did she say van or man? Regardless, we move on to the finals. This is Street Eliminator. And oh, what a grudge match this is. If you know the drivers like I know the drivers, this is going to be intense. Will we see a burn down? Andy Frost. Steve Nash. Well, not much in it on the start line, but it's Andy Frost powering away. Splinter's coming back, but he's not got enough, and it's Andy Frost who takes the deserved win at the top end. I like to call him the media whore. Super modified, Tim Garlic. Super He's really Mr. been getting a handle on this machine. When they put that big engine in, they had to put in so much weight. They really didn't know where to put that weight on the car, but pretty much got it spot on. It's been hooking up and handling well, but he's been cutting in fantastic reaction times all day. And he's got the more powerful car. And look, Fred Holmes miles away, but I think there must be a problem for Tim. He should be in screen by now. Well, Fred virtually solos all the way through. You can see the massive nitrous burp there. The flames flying back through the bonnet on Tim's car. Here comes the gov. You have here a bizarre set of cars. The quickest and the slowest in the car in the final. And, well, Mr. Sidaway, he's had a fantastic weekend, but he's just going to have to watch the back end of the governor as he flies through the top end with yet another 770. And in Outlaw Anglia, it's the Gov himself, Paul Wright. Paul, first time back at Bug Jam for a little while. The yeah. car's been running arrow straight. Give us a little rundown on your weekend. Yeah, we, we came here with, uh, with a new clutch and um, with not much, many expectations to run big numbers, but it, it worked well straight away. Um, and the crew did a great job with lots of uh, turning the car around in, in short space of time. Worked really well for us. And I have to ask, last season when we were following you, the car was a little twitchy, but now it's arrow straight. Have you worked on that a lot? Yeah, we've made, made some quite major changes, really, and, um, and that, that seems to be working well. Now, uh, now we need some more power. 
More power, he says. I'd say he's got plenty enough, certainly enough to win. Thank you very much. Martin Ayrton, in Homer's Revenge, has so much experience now. And the total rookie with the evil powers of Mick Gurgity on board. Is he robot controlled? Who knows? The Sirocco's closing down, but he hasn't done it at the top end. The rookie has won. And our winner and first time out in his Baja Badger, as they like to call it, the off-road bug, it's Craig. Craig, how many times have you been to Bug Jam? Uh, about six. And what gave you the idea to go racing proper? Was it the big man who's been with you all weekend? It's the big man himself, Mick Garrity. Garrity, Gurgity, whatever he likes to call himself. <laughs> many pseudonyms. And I think he's taught you well in the powers of the dark side. You seem to race today with an awful lot of knowledge. Like you'd been racing for six years, not coming to Bug Jam for six years. Well, it's, it's not really been into drag racing, to be honest, until I got to know Mick, which has only been a couple of years. So he has really taught me well. And um, how's your Bug Jam experience been from this side, if you like, on the racing side of things, as opposed to a party head over in the main camping area? A lot quieter. <laughs> <laughs> it's panel fan versus stripped down bug, stripped down, put back together again. It should have been a funny car, but the no remorse bug gets its final out, impossibly, <laughs> in a final as well. The bay window's off and away. I'm sure he's missing a gear. There we go, it's bogging out again. And the beetle overtakes. Uh, Mr. Skeen, you could have adjusted your dial in, but it's Andy Raw who takes the win. Winner in alternate engine, Mr. Andy Raw. Andy, was it a good bug jam? It was a great bug jam. Shame about the weather at the start, but finished on the Sunday. Really, really good. Yeah, wicked. You seem to have been squeezing an awful lot out of the No Remorse Bug. Is that because it's soon due for retirement? We actually put it away for retirement. We were supposed to bring the funny car here this weekend and race it for its first outing, but unfortunately, things with funny cars, they don't work out. Um, so we got it back, put it all back together, new gearbox, got it down here, try to run some decent numbers with it. We was lucky on the darling, and uh, it just all come together at the end. Yeah. <laughs> Well, here's Glyn Morgan, and he's all on his own. No sign of Martin Taylor and Lil Whopper. One wheelie too many? Who knows? Glyn's winning streak continues, 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 and he takes the win. Glenn, it's, it's becoming a very, very regular thing, this. Can you put it down to any one thing? Um, just uh, pro probably uh, the engineering of the car. Dazza from Air Cool Performance and Paul from... VW Speed Shop really looked after me. Without them, none of it would be possible, mate. It'd be brilliant. I have to ask, you were nowhere near the 1299 and quicker dialing earlier on in the day. Was that deliberate to fox the competitors, or were you fighting a problem? Lull them into a soft, false sense of security, mate. <laughs> well, the next and final instalment of the Abbey Tether story is... Um, the girl done well. Um, it did help that you found a bye. You came up against a bye a little bit further through the eliminations. You've got to be so chuffed, Abby. You got through a lot of rounds today. Oh, incredibly chuffed. Um, I wasn't expecting to get as far as I did. And the bus hooked up and was running absolutely on top of form, even though the headwind. And uh, very consistent. And so very, very happy to get, obviously, the bye and, uh, and uh, knock out a few competitors, I suppose. I wasn't expecting today to be as glorious as it has been. I was expecting to hopefully get at least a run in and maybe some points. But uh, to get through to the uh, semi-finals, I was absolutely on top of the moon. And to, to go see it go all the way through, and oh, it was just it's been a fantastic day and a fantastic weekend. I've been really enjoyed it. It's been great to be able to concentrate on one team and see what exactly goes into a team's efforts across the whole Bug Jam experience. And we have to say one thing. Well done, Abby. Yeah. 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 So that's it. Yeah. Bug Jam 21. We came of age. And in what spectacular style. Every time you come to pod, you get memories that you can take home with you. This year, you also got wheel arches and floors and carpets full of mud. It was such an amazing weekend. The racing was fantastic. The VWDRC regrouped and came out en masse. 
The guest classes were amazing. All of the nighttime entertainment was fantastic. Even if we were dancing up to our ankles in slurry, it was one heck of a way to celebrate 21 years of Volkswagens at Santa Pod. Be so much illusions And in this game you take a whole lot of bruising And you just gotta figure out The path that you're choosing The path that you're choosing And hope the game don't use ya, use ya Cause if you let it, it can abuse ya, abuse ya So that's just something that's amusing I mean in this game There's just so many illusions So many illusions Time to break.